Welcome back to another Somewhere in Wisconsin. Today, I'm going to teach you how to build a bowstring. Now, building a bowstring isn't something I've always been interested in doing. What led me to building bowstrings was ultimately me tuning my own bows, setting my own peep sights, setting up my bows so that I could shoot them for indoor, so I could shoot them for outdoor 3D, and then shoot them for hunting season. So ultimately, the next thing that I could do was build strings for my bows and once you finish building a bowstring really it does feel good to go out to a range and shoot it and someone says hey man who made that string for you You say oh I made it myself it's actually not that hard so that's why I started building bowstrings now I am not the best bowstring builder in the world I've only built six cables and three strings however I feel that it is a pretty quick learning process now I am no expert I would never sell my strings to anybody right now if somebody asked me to build them a pair of strings or a set of strings, I probably would, but I would also, you know, do that for them as long as they bought the material. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try to walk you through how I build a bowstring, how I figured out how to build a bowstring, just walk you through the build process that I use to build these strings. So this series consists of four videos for you. I didn't really do a materials video um, in this series because the links I'm going to put below will have all the materials that you'll need to build your first set of strings. It includes everything you'll need to build your jig. Um, it also includes types of materials that you should use to build your first string. And I would strongly recommend going over to Archery Talk, clicking on this link below, going over to Archery Talk, checking out that thread. I mean, it's, it's thousands of posts, ultimately, on building strings. And many guys have built this jig that I have right here and have built some quality strings using this jig. That was what I would suggest, is going over, checking out that site for all those materials and the things you need to actually build the bowstring. What I'm gonna do in this series is just walk you through um, the process after you learn how to build a bowstring. Now, the demos they give on that site are awesome. They're typed up versions, they're in words, they're good discussions. I just tried to make a video that went along with what they were talking about um, in the first you know, few pages of that bowstring building thread there on Archery Talk. The first video that I'm making for you today is really all about the layout on this two post jig. So it's how you lay out your material and that's pretty much it. So I talk about setting the jig posts and then I also talk about laying out the material. So that's going to be video one in this series. Video two in this series is all about tying our end loops. So it's, that's the whole video is about tying end loops how to do it and what you need to do to tie those end loops up. Video three in this series is all about stretching, twisting, and eventually burnishing your string to make sure that it is prepared and ready to be served. And then video four in this series is all about serving that string so that we can get it on our bow. I also talk a little bit about measuring our bow string in that last video as well. So this series has four parts. I hope that you enjoy the videos. Please comment down below on each video. Let me know, if you're a string builder, let me know what you do differently or give me a tip, give me a suggestion how to make my strings better. If you've never built a bow string before, let it be a place you can talk and ask questions about how I built my strings or um, maybe it's something you're interested in doing. So those are the four parts to this series and let's get right into video one right now. Thank you guys very much for watching. Smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and let's talk strings down below. Thank you very much. All right, the first thing you need to do to make a bowstring is set your posts to your desired length. Um, I'm making a cable here to start first today. So I used a formula that I got off of a website called Archery Talk and a string building formula. And the formula sets these posts a little bit farther apart so when you add twists to your bowstring um, they end up being the correct length so my cable length on this bow I'm building today is 38 and 15 16 inches my initial post setting is actually 39 and between 4 16 and 5 16 so right around there um, I will probably run it a little bit small shorter on my cable um, that way if I'll probably just run it a little bit shorter on the cable it's probably 
I'll be right in between that 14, 4 sixteenths and 5 sixteenths. doesn't have to be super precise because I can add or take out some twists towards the end of the process if I need to. So uh, when you measure um, the post length, length of the post, uh, you measure from the outside of each post. So outside of each post, I measure and I say like 39. I crank these down real hard because we're going to be stretching. I don't want them to move because it causes some funny tension inside the string as I begin to lay it out. After we get our post set to the correct lengths, in this case for me, 39 and 4 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, anywhere in between there is good for me. Um, then what I need to do is I need to lay out my string. And what I do, um, I'm building a cable for a friend today, and he's gonna build with two colors. Typically, strands are 22 to 24, uh, cables are 22 to 24 strands of this material. In this case, I'm using some 452X. Um, he's building, he wants silver and orange. Uh, when you lay out your string, you go from one post to the next post and back. That's one. It's important to keep track um, or it's easy to actually lose count on what string you're on and so on and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out this string now. I'll put the camera behind so you can kind of see me laying it out from post to post and see me counting. Now, I'm making a 20 I'm making a 24 strand string, so I'm going to lay out 12 strands in orange and 12 strands in silver. Um, and by doing that, I'll have a 24 strand, two color string. So I'll go ahead and um, I'll lay out the orange first, just because it looks nice. You tie them off on the back side, so I'm going to tie mine off down here, and I'll keep track from there. So. You want to make sure you leave enough extra material so you are able to serve them in correctly. I actually need another clamp like this. So I'm going to go ahead and keep track as I go. I'm going to count out loud because that is kind of helpful. So one half. It's important to keep similar string tension on your string. There's one. One and one half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. Five and a half, six. Now, as you noticed, I stopped counting at six wraps, and I did that for a reason. The reason I did that is because there's going to be six orange on one side and six orange on the other, so that will give me my 12 strands of one color. So I stopped at six. I'm going to tie off that end down there. And then I'll go ahead and lay out my yellow, now or my gray. When I start my gray, I'm going to start from the opposite side and count in the same manner. When you leave your string down here at the back, make sure you leave at least a foot because we're going to use these. They're called tag ends later on. Uh, they're going to actually be part of our string. This is going to be part of our string. This one that's down here a little bit lower here. These are going to be part of our string and you want to leave about a foot or more off the back of that string. I'm going to come over here to this side and lay out my silver the same way I laid out my other ones. Alright, I'm going to lay out my silver. 
and count as a go. One half. One. One and one half. Two. Two and one half. Six. All right. So I have my material laid out. You can see both colors. I will now have 24 strands of material on this string. What I don't like here is see how loose this is. I need to make sure that that tension stays tight. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up on the back just to make sure that uh, we're all good there. If we look very closely right here, we want to make sure that none of these lines are crossed. They want to be kind of stacked right on top of each other. And I always like to just push them down to the base there. Take it, push them down. My orange ones stay nice and tight. I've got my string laid out. The next thing I need to do is serve and wrap my tag ends. So.